All right, it is time for a tag video. Hey everyone, it is Shannon, and I'm super excited to be here today and to do this tag video for you. This is the Reread Book Tag 2020 version. The original was created by Roz and Alf of Scally Dandling, I think, about the books. It's not very easy to say, but I tried Scally Dandling about the books. And I was tagged by Amy from Zoe Beck. So thank you to Amy for tagging me. I am sorry that it has actually taken me quite some time to get to this tag, but it is fun and it, I like rereading. So I am excited to do this one. So this is all about rereading. Okay, the first question is, let's assume you do reread um, if you're doing this tag. So where do you sit on the rereading scale from almost never to all the time? And I'm definitely in the middle to almost never. Well, I read it, reread about one to three titles a month. So I think that is consistent, but, you know, not uh, in the vast scheme of things. It doesn't encompass a huge amount of my reading, but I do consistently read, reread, you know, I, do, I think that's fairly often. To me, that feels fairly often. Um, and it's something that sort of always, there's usually at least one series. I'm like, oh yeah, I want to reread that or I'm in the middle of a reread. So it is something that is is present, even though it doesn't encompass a huge amount of my overall reading. Um, number two, has this changed in your reading life? Absolutely. Um, I never used to reread with the exception of like a favorite series or one particular title. It is something that I've definitely come to do more frequently in the past several years. Um, and it's something that I enjoy. Um, but it's I think when you're younger, I don't know if it's a memory thing. Um, but I think for me when I was younger, I didn't consider rereading because I would, I would, I think I generally would remember, you know, what happened in earlier books or I stuck with something and then just let it go. But I, I, you know, I gotta say, I think it might be a bit of a memory thing. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, when do you reread? Immediately after finishing a book or not until years later when the mood strikes? For me, it's usually years later, um, and there are a few times that I will reread one particular title within a given year. This happened, oh, I forgot to pick it out, but with uh, uh, Oedipus the King or Oedipus the King by Sophocles, I read that in print and loved it, and then I listened to it on audio. So sometimes I do that, like if I enjoy its uh, title so much, I will reread it again, but often in a different format, usually go from going from print or ebook to audio. So I do have some in-year rereading. Um, but generally speaking, it's years later. And generally speaking, it is with series. So if there has been a fair amount of time since I have read a series, and I want to get back to that series, sometimes I go back to the beginning and read the whole thing through if I think it'll be more enjoyable. Um, and if I feel like my memory of the series is not super strong, uh, then I will go back to the beginning. And then on occasion, I might reread something years later if there is a film or TV adaptation announced, I will reread it in, in anticipation for the adaptation. Number four, why do you read read books? Um, I, I think, honestly, this one is for enjoyment, just to enjoy that story one more time, you know? And um, I have that with some series or particular titles or particular, you know, books within series that I love so much that I just want to revisit them. And then I also reread books, as I mentioned before, to finish series. So if I've read two of six books and I don't feel like I can jump into the third book, I'll go back to the beginning and read the whole way through. Um, and then on, if it's not series with more challenging works, sometimes it's to understand or glean more from the work with each read. Um, this happened to me with um, uh, poems of the Edder Elda. This one I did differently. I listened to it on audio. There's a great audio version on Scribed, which has multiple narrators or, or I guess they're narrators. Is it still narrators if it's like poetry? feels a little more performancey. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But I listened to that on audio and then I went to and then I read it in print. But I, in that one, I enjoyed the audio so much more. And I think it's because some of the narrators, there was one in particular that was just like, and sometimes with some classic works like that, there, it's just like you understand it. 
you just understand it. And um, yeah, so for more challenging works, sometimes I will reread them to get more from them uh, each and every time. And um, and sometimes it's a combination of the both, like both, like with Shakespeare, um, I enjoy it and I get more from it each and every read. So I think it's a combination of enjoyment and understanding. Number five, how do you reread? Faster, slower, just the bit, best bits. Um, this one depends on what I'm rereading and why I'm rereading it. So generally speaking, if I'm rereading to like for a series, if I'm rereading to finish off a series, I might read it a little bit faster if I remember certain things or if there's certain threads for characters that I am less interested in and then really hyper focus on the characters and the stories and the plot lines that I'm very interested in or I don't remember as well. Um, and if it's more of uh, the comprehension or understanding or getting a bit more, I think I actually read it sort of at the same pace um, each time. I don't think I ever read just the best bits. Um, to me, that doesn't super feel like rereading if we don't go from start to finish because I am one of those people that is like buy the book and <laughs> a lot of things. Um, for me, I would never, you know, claim that for someone else. Um, so if I was just like, say, I, I want to reread a particular scene, I wouldn't like count that on my spreadsheet as a reread. I would just be like, oh, no, I just, you know, I just wanted to revisit that. And so I did. It's like rewatching a favorite scene from a TV show or a movie on, on, on YouTube or not on YouTube. You wouldn't do that on Netflix or wherever you have it. <laughs> um, and, uh, and uh, you know, and then like, I wouldn't recount that on like Letterboxd if I just watched a particular scene. That's me. That's how I think of things. Um, and yeah, so it also, I think, depends on how much time has passed. Um, if it's been like 10 or more years since I've read something, I'm probably going to read it at like regular reading speed and read everything um, because either there's parts that I don't remember, so I want to get the full, you know, full gist of things and then or there's parts that I remember and really like and I want to really be present so I think it depends on the work um so a little faster for if it's a series work that I'm just sort of refreshing but everything else probably is uh the main space unless there's characters I don't like which in to be honest is not doesn't have a huge chance that I would be rereading it if there's a lot of characters I don't like which is probably another question <laughs> number six who or what do you reread more specifically are there particular authors or genres or individual books. Generally speaking, it's uh, favorite authors um, and uh, for particular series. So, and um, this can generally falls onto fantasy, romance, urban fantasy, plays, and then some classics um, for again comprehension. So it's a it's a it's a pretty that's is that broad? That feels pretty broad. That feels pretty broad. I would say I don't reread nonfiction a lot. There are some works that I've read again and again, um, even though I love nonfiction, it doesn't tend to be something that I reread, which is a little, I'm, I'm surprised at that. Okay, number seven, is there a book that you found better after you reread it? I wouldn't necessarily say better, but I was more forgiving <laughs> to The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe on second read, um, uh, or when I read it as an adult. Um, I really was upset at the first read of that because and this is a minor spoiler so let me put up I'm going to put up this I'll put up this this wall I'm talking about the because this is going to be about the ending of the line the witch in the wardrobe so um so I was very upset on the first read of the line the witch in the wardrobe because it very became very clear that it was allegory and uh, a message book um and that there was a religious theme to it. And I had not picked up on that because it's a fantasy book and it's a portal fantasy and, you know, there's talking animals and all this stuff. And like all of a sudden I'm like, why is religion here? And I got very, very upset. But when reading it as an adult, so spoiler zone over. Um, so, but when reading it as an adult, I was more forgiving of that probably because I had, you know, um, I was aware of it um, because I do think that I, I just, I felt Mm, I just I was I was not happy so I want to say that I, and I guess I enjoyed it better because I wasn't upset just generally speaking if you're not upset you're more happy but you know it was very and I was 
so that's the only example I can think of as enjoying something better, which is weird. I feel like you would, like, considering how much I reread, I would think that I would enjoy things more in the second round. Or maybe I only reread generally things that I enjoy. Not sure about that one. Interesting. Interesting question. Number eight, um, and was there one that was worse on reread? Not really. I, the closest I can come to this is that when I reread... Um, Grave Peril, which is the third book in the Dresden Files, and uh, and I DNF'd it. Um, it's by Jim Butcher, and I got to the exact same point two times in a row. This also actually happened to me with American Gods um, by Neil Gaiman. I got to the exact same point in the story two times in a row, and I'm like, I'm done. I'm out. This is I'm not reading this. This is not for me. No. So those aren't necessarily worse, but they were the same impact. They're both titles that I reread because they're popular works or they're genres that I like and they're authors that I think I could enjoy. Neil Gaiman, I do like a lot of his work, but with um, Dresden, this is the only thing I've read by Jim Butcher. And I was just like, no, that's just a hard pass on that. So <laughs> so although it's not worse, it was the same and it made me, when I hit the same point at the same, this when I hit the same moment, at the same weight of like saying no, then, you know, then I DNF the series or the book in the case. So yeah, I'm, uh, I don't really think there's a lot that I am concerned about some of the titles maybe that I read when I was younger, and rereading them and being like unaware at the time that's maybe they like, if I reread them now, I might see things that I didn't notice on first pass. So that is something that I'm concerned about with rereading um, certain titles. And I don't know whether I should just like let it go and let the memory be what it was, or if it's worth investigating. I am not sure. And that's in particular with, um, I think most specifically with some fantasy works. So that's one of my concerns that I don't want it to feel worse the second time. So I might just let the memory be what it was. I'm not too sure what I'm going to do about that. Question number nine, which book have you reread re the most times? I have in second place, I have read... Beowulf, and I have read it, it looks like I have read it six times. No, I've read the work twice, so in 2013 and 2017, and I've also read an illustrated kids edition as well as a graphic novel. So I've read it four times, two times in this type of format, one was ebook and one was this actual very tiny edition of Beowulf, um, and, uh, and then I've read two other interpretations, so it's two to four reads, depending on how you classify that. And then the title that I've read the absolute most is Macbeth. Yes, I read it in high school. I read it in 2015, 2016, 2019, 2020, and I probably will read it this year as well. Um, I've read it in print. I've read it Classics Illustrated Edition. I've listened to it on audio, narrated by James Marsters, which was really good. Um, and so, and I've also read um, another interpretation um, with an, uh, and I haven't read the accompanying like the, oh no, last year, last year I did read all the accompanying text um, and works involved in it, which let me know that it's actually based on uh, like an actual historical figure. So Macbeth is the big winner at four, I think four reads plus one audio, one classics illustrated. And um, I should see if there's more uh, graphic novel or comic interpretations. I've also seen multiple book to film adaptations, both traditional ones, like the one with Michael Fassbender. It's a bit non-traditional actually, that one. And then also thrown... Throne of Blood um, is also a version of Macbeth. So Macbeth has my heart. I know it is dark, but I love it. So Macbeth is the big one. And I do now, since I've been rereading it for so many years in a row, it is a bit now of an annual reread tradition that um, usually more in October, but last year was in the summer for a Shakespeare readathon. So I really, I really love Macbeth. So there you go. Or as they have it, the Scottish play. So there is the reread book tag 2020 version, <laughs> only a year late or a couple months. If you would like to do this tag, I highly encourage you to do the tag if you do any rereading at all. I would love to hear your thoughts. Do you have a favorite reread? Do you have any reread traditions, like any particular series or titles that you reread at a particular time of year or a particular season or something like that? Love to hear your thoughts. Thank you again to Amy for tagging me. This is fun to do. Sorry it was late. Um, as I am doing this late, I'm not going to tag anyone individually, but I encourage you to do the tag if you would like to do the tag. Um, I had a lot of fun doing it. 
Thanks so much for watching. I will be back soon with another video. Bye.